Hey guys, I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live. Checking everything. Looks like we're doing pretty good here. So we got James Scoggins in here and Will is in here. Southern Mama Drama. Man, we got them jumping in quick. James Scoggins is from Louisville, Kentucky. Man, congratulations. So guys, man, as y'all know, there is a lot of stuff going on in the world today. So what I want to do is just ask y'all, you know, what's going on with the coronavirus where you're at? What is going on with the plumbing industry where you're at? And I ask because, you know, I'm just outside of Dallas, so I'm in Dallas County. And literally, uh, just yesterday, Glo Judge County Judge Clay Jenkins says, look, we're going to shut everything down. We're going to put people on, what, in-house arrest, uh, being in your house, not going anywhere unless it's critical. It's a great thing. But, you know, they're also calling plumbing a necessity. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a great thing, and I love that because I, I believe he's right. I think that if people have a sewer backup, they have a water leak, they have things like that. Th those are things that we need to get out and help people get taken care of because water is, of course, a necessity. Uh, so we had Jonathan R. jump in here. How are you? Guitar 1301, good to see you. Fellow plumber from... Louisville, can uh, wait. We got one from Louisville, Kentucky. There we go. And then, uh, man, this thing jumps on me real fast. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina schools canceled until May fifteenth. You know, and we've we've got we've got Julie Wakefield has been quarantined to home uh, by herself, meaning she did it. I think it was just so she could get some time off. I heard she worked for a tough guy. I'm just saying. So you know, here's the deal: is what's going on where you're at. And I, I know that sounds crazy, but but it's true. And, you know, I, I see that construction sites are up and running. You know, our, and you said service site is slow. And, guys, it's going to be. So I want you all to think about that. The service industry, this is going to be just like April 15th and, and the month or two before it. It's going to be just like between Thanksgiving and Christmas. There's going to be – a lot of issues going on and, and it's going to be like that because we don't know what to expect. And, you know, the, the good thing about it is, you know, we don't know what to expect, but the bad thing about it is we don't know what to expect. So when, when you look at it like that, we don't know how bad this is going to be, but we need to be prepared. And we are literally, and I, and I brought this thing in here because, and, and I'll read it again later, but we, we've got a deal that we just started doing. And basically, whenever we get a call in, now one of the things that we ask them after we kind of vet out the customer, is this our customer? Is this what we want to do? Is this a job that we've they've contacted the right people for? But one of the things that we're doing that, that we're asking them now is before we get started, out of an abundance of caution and in order to protect you and our technicians, we would like to ask if anyone in your home or workplace has COVID-19 or coronavirus or are showing symptoms such as fever, coughing, shortness of breath, or is self-isolating or being quarantined. And guys, we ask that for, for different reasons, but the main thing is, number one, we don't want to put our guys in a situation that's not good for them. But also, number two, we don't want to put our customers in a bad situation. And we, we ask that, and that's why it starts off out of an abundance of caution. And I, I know to, to some of us, words like that, it starts sounding funny. It's like, guys, look, we're just plumbers. <laughs> and I get it because I use that phrase a lot. But here's the deal is, man, we need to be looking out for each other. And I say that because with everything going on, we don't know who's got what, and, and you need to think about that because, you know, I've got three people here that, that are getting out and seeing the public, and, you know, we don't know when we walk into one person's house, and, and I walked into two different places today, and the, the big thing is when I walked in, it was, okay, is everything okay? Do I need to worry about it? But remember, after I walked in the first place, then I walked into another one. Now, if I walked into that first place and I was not maintaining my six foot distance because I'm trying to stay separated a little bit and 
I got close to that person in the second one and say, so I was contagious at that point. Guys, we've got to look out for each other in everything that we do. So I'm going to scroll back through here a little bit, see if I've missed anybody or missed anything good. Uh, James Scoggins from UA502, good to have you here. I'm from Local 100 I'm in Dallas, Texas. Uh, jumped on me again. Are your construction sites are up? I like that. Will, hope everyone is doing okay in this crazy time. Absolutely. Miller Twice. Hey, Roger, line cook, out of work, and looking to use the break to gain skills. Love your channel. Man, that's fantastic. And, and I think that's great because I tell people all the time, and, you know, it's really funny. And, and let me say it, it's not funny. Uh, I, I tell people all the time, like, plumbing is a great trade to learn. And I saw something that somebody posted the other day, and this is all you high school students, look at who they're keeping working right now. Look at what is considered critical people, necessity people. And that's a job you want to have in the future. That way, if anything like this ever does happen, you know that you can jump in and take care of people. Uh, yeah, that, that you're right. That, that is a great thing to do. Uh, you know, anytime you educate yourself, whether it's to learn to do things to work around your house or whether it's to learn to do things to actually get out and get a new job, man, it's, it's a good opportunity. And, you know, you, you said you were a line cook. Where are you cooking at? Because I thought, at least here in the Dallas area, most restaurants are open. So not sure, you know, where you're at or what's going on. And I did a big plumbing job the other day for somebody that works for a big pizza, pizza restaurant nationwide. And he said, look, they have not shut us down. He said, we've actually got busier because of all the delivery and pickup. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things and a lot of different places, but things are, things are different everywhere right now. I know California, New York, and Seattle, Washington State are all under tighter quarantine type situations than we are. But I do remember seeing something by New York mayor uh, or governor, uh, what, Cuomo, saying, hey, look, you know, we need to mandate people do things. That way we do things safer. And, guys, is it getting time for that? Because, you know, right now there's a lot going on, but how bad is it going to be a week from now, a month from now, two or three months from now? And that's something that we've got to look at because I think it's going to get a lot better before it start getting starts getting any worse. Construction cronies in the house, good to have you here, brother. I saw, I saw you in a couple of different lives this weekend, I believe. Good to see you out there. Uh, Dante Richardson, got your result back from your plumbing aptitude test for Local 55, and you passed. Next up is the interview. Man, I think that is fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, I'm glad it all went well. Dante, if you will, leave some information in here and let me know what kind of information were they looking for in the aptitude test. What all did they test you for? And I'm just curious because I have people ask me that all the time. And that's something I've never taken. Uh, James Coggins, how are my guys? Prote how are we protecting our men? You know, Julie is really good about that, and she's in here, so she can chime in on it too. But we we've ordered the N95 mask. Julie runs out to Home Depot every chance she gets to try to pick some more up. Uh, there's a lot of things that we know that we're doing that we don't need them. There's a lot of things that we are. I was really proud of my guys. We were doing a sewer repop the other day. And I went out there to check on them, and I climbed under the house. It was really funny because it was right after I made the video. And, and if y'all hadn't seen the video of the things that I talk about, about the coronavirus and the COVID-19 and what we need to be doing, it was the day that I made that video, and I go out and check my guys. And, man, they are spot on. They are doing things right. And I was so happy to see that. But we're giving them the Tyvek suits. We're giving them the latex gloves. Julie's picking up the respirators, the N95 respirators, uh, masks, face shields, glasses, anything at all that we can do to help keep people clear, we're really trying to do it. Uh, Paul Peck's in the house, great, great guy. Uh, Paul talked to CJ and Drill this morning. Guys, that's another channel if y'all have not seen. If you're a DIYer, man, <laughs> teaches some great stuff. But I actually talked to Leah today. Uh, she called me, or actually she sent me a message, and I ended up calling her. 
uh, this lady's phenomenal for DIY, teaching people, and she's wanting to do something really cool. And she reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to be part of it. And man, I was just, I was really excited about it. So, Paul, thank you for that invitation. She is really, really good person. Uh, Will Hendricks, man, what can we do to help? You know, the, the thing is, is, and, and how many of y'all are in plumbing or in any trade? And things have slowed down. How many of y'all are in a position where, look, we're not working now because of what's going on? And I don't know what's going to happen here, but right now they're saying, look, plumbers are still a, a necessity. And, you know, we need plumbers out here. The problem is if we don't have plumbers out there and people start doing their own work, I did a lot of research the other day before I did my report or my article on LinkedIn about the coronavirus and the world health organization figured out that over in Hong Kong, people doing their own plumbing led to this problem. And, and not, I, I don't want to get that wrong. It's not that it led to the problem, but it led to the spread of it because they let people work on their own plumbing. People that didn't know what they were doing. They were disconnecting a vent line and leaving it open in their apartment. And what happens then when somebody else flushes a toilet, the, the fumes, everything comes up. And I guess the fumes may not have been bad, but what happens is that aerosol from the, the mist, and I read somewhere today that the COVID-19 virus has been found in fecal matter. So guys, think about it. It's in sewer pipe, and it's in the vent lines, and it is contagious. So we all need to be careful. But the, the thing is, we've got to help each other. We've got to help educate each other. And that's why I just, man, I just share information and tell people, look, this is what I found. And, man, if y'all like it, man, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. If you don't, tell me, hey, Roger, look, you're just spreading the hype. Unfortunately, I don't think it's hype. I think we really got to look out for each other. Call me daddy. Love the channel. Keep up the great content or keep the great content coming, man. And we are trying. Uh, we, we, we do. We love what we do. And, guys, I don't just – and you can talk to Paul because we've talked about stuff like this before, but I don't just throw content out there. I've got Will, I've got Grayson. Will is phenomenal at the research that he does and, and helps me comes up, come up with, with what we need to be talking about. And, man, it's fantastic because he really, really is good. Uh, make sure I didn't miss anybody up here. Uh, here we go. Southern Mama Drama in Charlotte, okay? Jetting service calls are down. Residential commercial service calls are normal. You know, and... Man, jetting may be the way to go because that may really clean things out and help wash the virus down in a way. Just be careful because, and I know I did a video just the other day on jetting. And, you know, that, that spray that whenever you first stick it in or pull it out and it's getting up close to it, you get a lot of moisture coming out and, and you get a lot of that aerosol, the, the spray droplets. And, and guys, look, it, it's going to be in the air. It's going to. And if you're inhaling that, you're putting that right in your body. Uh, so we got to keep an eye on it. Stan Chubik, good to see you in here again. Miller twice. You cook at a bank in Delaware. They all had to close. Governor closed everything until May the 15th. Okay, so Miller twice, let me ask you this. When, when you say closed everything, what about plumbing? And I'm curious just because when I go in and see the reports, I know the White House has said, look, plumbing is essential. It's something that has to happen, like restaurants, like grocery stores, like gas. All that has to happen. We can't shut all that down. So I'm just curious because I have not checked on Delaware to look to see what state they're in. But what all have they shut down? Uh, Paul, you're in here. Do me a favor. Tell me, and you may have already done it because I'm not that far down yet. You know, what is shut down in your state where where you guys are at? What is shut down? What is this coronavirus doing to not just the plumbing industry, but the trades, all the trades? What's it doing to you? How many people in here can't work because of what's going on? Because we had a meeting with our guys today, talk to them to say, look, what do we want to do? What do y'all want to do? What can we all do to make things safer for each other? And I've got to tell you, my guys are like, look, we want to work. We want to help people. And Man, with the guys I've got, I can tell you just from talking to them, it's not just about, look, we want to work because we need the money. It's like, look, we want to work because we think it's the right thing to do. 
And don't get me wrong, the, the calls are getting lower. There's not as many of them. And we're very picky about the work that we do. Uh, we're, we're, we're a high-end plumbing company. And everybody just doesn't want to call us out to do you know, every little detail. And, and I'm very much aware of that. So we kind of keep an eye on it. Barney Films 85, good to have you in the house. Ethan Varghese, how are you? Would it be easy to find work in other states or even other countries once you become a journeyman? Uh, Ethan, tell me where are you located and what kind of testing do they have where you're at? And the reason I ask is I'm in Texas and our testing is very difficult. The good thing about that is with a Texas license, I can normally go to pretty much any other state, any other country, and it will at least be very beneficial for me that I have a Texas license. I know that there's some other states that come here that their testing is, and I don't want to say a joke, but some states it is, and Texas is just like, yeah, we don't even really recognize that as a license. I think if you can get it out of a box of Cracker Jacks, they don't count it. Now, like I said, I don't know where you're at, so I'm not saying that, but different states have dis different testing levels, I guess. Texas is pretty strict. Some states aren't. Some states don't even have a license. So anyway, Alfredo Diaz, good afternoon from San Diego. So there you go. San Diego won. Uh, California really does not have testing for its plumbers. The, the plumbing company owner has to do some testing to get a contractor's license or whatnot, but he determines when the plumbers are ready. And Alfredo, if you're a plumber in, in San Diego, would you please verify that and let me know for sure? That's kind of what I've been told, and I think it is. Uh, James Coggins, glad you're here, brother. <clears throat> Mike Hadfield, good evening from Germany. Man, Mike, how are y'all doing? Uh and I say that because I'm just curious. You know, we hear how bad it is in China. We hear about how bad it is in Italy. Uh, we hear how bad it is in the United Kingdom. And I haven't seen the Urban Explorer in here yet. But, you know, how is it over in Germany? I hadn't heard much about Germany. hadn't heard much about Russia. Uh, so, man, just kind of let me know how things are, where you're at. Uh, Paul, thank you. Guys, yeah, if you like this, man, hit the like button. Let me know. Okay, yeah. Stan, we know that's coming. Uh, I saw a really neat picture the other day. It was some guy, and he's got on, you know, Mr. T starter kit, and uh, he's got gold necklaces all around him and watches and rings on every finger and whatnot. And it says, you know, plumbers, when the stopped-up toilet calls start coming in from the baby wipes. Guys, look, I understand you might not be able to get toilet tissue right now, and you may have to buy baby wipes. But if you do, don't flush them down the toilet. Man, that's what that trash can's for. Use it. It'll help you out. Uh, Barney Films 85, do you know anything about what to do about a rotten egg smell and a new water heater used in a cabin? Boss wants me to cut out the anode rod, put in a small amount of bleach in the tank. Uh, Barney Films 85, I've heard of that. Uh, there, There is a way to bleach a water heater tank out. And you can go online and find the exact formula, but I think it's like you put a, a cup of, of bleach in it and let it get hot, let it do its deal and whatnot. But then you come out and you flush the heck out of it. Uh, you really want to flush it to get all that out. And, and me, I think I would even not just flush it through all the faucets and lines because I'd want to clean all that out. But I'd also think about flushing it down at the bottom just to make sure you get every bit of it out of the tank. I would maybe call in the manufacturer and ask them about it and see. Uh, like I said, you can find uh, bleaching information online, but I'd call the manufacturer and ask them what they recommend. Uh, Alfredo Diaz got laid off due to COVID-19. You're in San Diego. You know, and I saw something just the other day that they're, they're trying to put in place about, uh, I mean, number one, Alfredo, I'm, so, I'm sorry you got laid off, brother. Uh, were you a plumber or an apprentice or, or, or what is your ranking out there? How have they got you classified? Uh, and, and guys, I think there's going to be a lot of layoffs going on. Now, I hate to say that, but I also think that, you know, from what I've heard, the government's trying to reach in and say to all the small businesses, look, don't let go of your people. We're going to help you get through this. And I think they're going to have to, but you know, as a small business owner, unless they're standing there with a check already saying, Hey, Roger, look, here's 
20 grand to pay your guys for the next, what, eight weeks, 10 weeks, whatever it is, it's hard to keep people working because eventually we run out of money. And then it's like, okay, there's not any money left. How do I keep paying these guys when I don't even have money? And especially if we're not working and, and work's not coming in. So, man, that's a kind of a tough one. Uh, Alfredo says, says, we're an essential trade, but I don't notice any rising calls. And, man, we haven't seen a rise in them, and I think it's going to be just the opposite. And I say that because, remember, I started this off saying – if if we get into a point where this is like tax day, April 15th, if we get to a point where this is like Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and we know, hey, look, we've got family coming in, we know we've got to spend money here, plumbing normally slows down. And guys, think about it. Right now, people don't know what the future holds. People don't know what's going to happen in the next week, in the next month, in the next two months. We don't know how long this is. It's not like somebody can come out and say, hey, this is only going to last three weeks, and then you're going to be fine. If they told us all to go home for three weeks, we'd say, look, man, we'll, we'll find a way to make it. And even at three weeks, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to be hard to do. Uh, God, three, three weeks would be hard on us. But to be able to do that and say, okay, that's all it is. In 21 days, we're coming back to work. At least then you're like, okay, look. I'm going to have a check at the end of that first seven days because I'm going to get paid for last week. So then I got to maintain two weeks. Then I go back to work and then I get another check. But man, they can't tell us that. And that's what the scary part is. Remember, we're all afraid of what we don't know. And that's what makes this whole thing scary. We have no idea what's going to happen. Look at China. China's been dealing with this for three to six months right now. Now, I don't know how honest they're being with us or how honest we're being or our government's being with us about them, but we don't really know what all's going on over there. We just know, man, there's not a lot of people uh, that that it's, it's been good for. And everything they're doing has taken three to six months. What if it takes us three to six months? How many people could handle staying at home three to six months, not working, not bringing a paycheck home? How many of them are still going to call a plumber? And, and that's what we got to look at, guys. It's, it's a tough world right now, and it's going to stay that way for a little while. Julie, we wear gloves all the time. We don't touch anything in the house. Masks, hand sanitizer, and Clorox wipes in each truck. Tyvek suits and safety glasses when needed. And that's it. We're doing all of it. And, and Stan, I see your comment. Roger, if you find any extra N95s, pick some up. Brother, there are no extras. Uh, we ordered some weeks ago. And we're just now getting notification, hey, you'll receive them in a month and a half. And, you know, that, that's kind of what's out there right now. Paul Peck, Leah hit you up too. Fantastic. Man, this is going to be a neat deal because i tell you what. And, and those of y'all that have not seen C. Jill Drain, C. Jane Drill, go over to her YouTube channel. Click on one of her videos, watch what she does. She teaches people how to DIY at home. I mean, don't do it right now. Don't leave my channel. Come back. Come back, people. Don't leave right now, but go over and go to CJ Drill. Watch one of the videos. Tell her that Roger and Paul told you to come over, say hello, subscribe. She's doing some good things. And we're going to do, Paul and I are each going to end up doing some live stuff with her here pretty soon. So it's really going to be pretty cool. Marty Films 85, you are five guys in the field and one is taking a leave of absence. I believe he's trying to start his own business. We are slowing down, a mix of bad timing on some new construction jobs and services slowing down. So, Marty Films, here's what I'll tell you right there is number one, for anybody trying to start a business right now, man, God bless them. Uh, it's going to be tough and they're going to need a lot of help. Uh, number two, a lot of remodels a lot of these small construction jobs that are trying to get started right now the owners are stepping in saying hey hold off now we want to wait and it's a smart decision they don't know what's going to happen they don't know how long this is going to take now i've got a buddy of mine that's in the restaurant industry 
And the chain that he works for is building six restaurants here. So the owner came up with them and said, look, we're not stopping. We, we know what's going on. We know it's going to be a pain, but our plan is to have six restaurants open when all this is done. So, you know, different people are looking at it different ways. I guess it really depends on how much reserves they've got put up and how, man, how, how liquid they are and what they can do. So it's getting kind of crazy. Julie says, Paul Peck, thank you. Uh, we're trying. Safety is always a priority, but we're trying to see what else we can do to keep people safe. And, you know, and Julie, you're right, and it's not just our people we're trying to keep safe, guys. It's it's other people. We're not just looking at us. We're looking at our customers, and that's really a big deal. And I tell you what, our customers are so relieved whenever we read over this statement and say, look, we're looking out for your safety and ours. And we just want you to know, here's what we're trying to do. And, and it really does help a lot. Dave Gorris, good to see you in here, brother. All supply houses call in orders, then call when you get there. They're willing to bring the materials out uh, in New York and New Jersey. And I just got that uh, message here today from uh, Ferguson Supply saying, look, if you will, if you'll give them a 30-minute notice, I think, on a call in, then call when you get there. They'll bring it out. They don't have to touch you. You don't have to touch them. You can still go in if you want to and go through the the parts. You know, they've got shelves and, and a great area there where they've got stuff on display. And you can go through there and look at all that. But here's the thing. When you get to the counter, you you stand six feet away from them. They will ring stuff up. They'll have you sign it. And it's just like the iPad signatures like we use. As soon as you sign it, they sanitize it. They wipe it down again. So, guys, everybody's trying to do things to make it better. And, and that's why my question is, you know, what's going on where y'all are at? Uh, Dave, you're in New York and New Jersey, uh, and I think your service. Is, is service normal, or is it slowing down right now? What's going on? Because I know where we're at. Like I said, they announced yesterday that at midnight tonight, so literally uh, – Seven and a half hours from now, they're saying that we're, we're on a, a stay-at-home lockdown type thing, except for essential personnel. And they are calling plumbing essential personnel. So it's going to be really interesting just to kind of see how this goes. Uh, Mike Hadfield, your message got retracted. I'm not sure why, but good to see you in here. The Trusty Tradesman, great channel. Your 10 reasons to get into plumbing inspired you to start an HVAC channel. I love it. Thank you so much. Uh, Dante Richardson, your plumbing aptitude test was basic math, English, shapes, and movements, and one section with mechanical reasoning. As a hands-on manual dexterity test, any tips on how to do well on the interview? Absolutely. Uh, Num number one, and look, Julie's in here. She's an etiquette and protocol consultant, and Julie can probably chime in more on this than me. But, Dante, what I'll tell you is think about what an, an, a business owner, what a company owner is going to look for. They want somebody to come in and look professional. Now, what I mean by that is don't wear in a three-piece suit. Chances are that's not what you're going to be wearing to work. But wear a nice pair of jeans, wear a nice pair of boots, tuck your shirt in. And I say that, and guys, I never tuck my shirt in anymore. Uh, but I'm doing more social media and less plumbing. Now, it's funny because I went out to a plumbing call today, and I actually had a different shirt on it, and I tucked it in. I want to look right for my customers. But when I'm here, when I'm doing social media, Paula see me in Los Angeles, uh, I, I don't tuck in my shirt. It's like, look, this, this is just, this is me. I'm laid back. I'm easy going and, and I'm having fun. Uh, but Dante, they want people with a good attitude. Uh, don't for any reason at all, carry your phone in. Or if you do turn it off, turn it all the way off or put it on. Do not disturb, put it in your pocket, never pull it out to look at, not for time, not for anything. Because when they see you doing that, they think you're on social media, you're goofing off, you're playing games. But come in and come in with a professional attitude. Let them know what it is you want. And this is one of the best things I've ever heard in an interview. And Julie can tell you more about it because she's the one who told me about it. But this company had interviewed this young man and, and talked to him. And then when they got done, they, they said, do you have anything for us? He said, well, absolutely. Absolutely. Turns the page over and he starts asking them questions. He's interviewing them. What? 
is it about your company or your union that means I should come to work for y'all? What are you going to teach me? How are you going to make me a better man, a, a better father, a better husband? How are you going to make me a better person to where I can provide for my family? What is it you're going to do to help me grow to help you more? And, you know, it's really neat because when, when she told me this, I was just really impressed. And she said that when that person got up to leave, the, the, the panel that she, they had talked to said, you know, thank you very much. She says It's really refreshing to see somebody ask us questions and, and want to learn more about why this is right for them. And it may not be right for you. And I tell people all the time, look, I love the union. Uh, I think for an employee, it's great. I think for a business owner, man, it's horrible. Uh, you know, the, the United Association just, it, it's, it's not the greatest thing in the world for a business owner, not a small company like me. And if you want to know more about it, give me a shout. I'll, I'll talk to you all day about it. As an employee, I think it's amazing. But I think as a business owner, it is, it has killed me. I mean, it has been a crutch I've had to, to carry with me all along and it, and it makes it really, really tough. So anyway. Uh, yeah, WAP should not be flushed. You're right. Mike Hadfield, Germany is getting bad. Not as bad as Italy, but they ended up locking down the state of Bavaria, and everything is closed. I don't know much about the plumbing because on a military post, but we are locked down. Man, Mike, I, I hate to see it, brother. I hate to see anybody locked down. But, guys, I'm telling you, if you look at why they're doing it, it makes perfect sense. If you look at you know the, the big high peak and, and then coming back down, or you look at the little hill and coming back down, it makes a lot of sense, and it's going to save a lot of lives. So at the end of the day, man, guys, it, it's, it's the right thing for us to do. If, and y'all are going to laugh, if I was still a hairstylist or a massage therapist, I'd be locked in at home, and I'd be like, you know what, I'm good with this. I don't want to be around people especially touching people that you have no idea if they're sick and there is no three foot distance there. You're right there with them, touching them, washing their hair, massaging their back, whatever it is. And if you're doing things like that, that there is no safe distance. So, you know, look at all these different people and what they're trying to do. And also guys, let me teach you a trick. Call ahead. Uh, my videographer today went in to go to the dentist to get something done. And this is something that's been planned. And he got there and they're like, well, we don't have the medication to, to deaden it with. And it's like, well, wait, I'd have, got, I'd have gone livid on them. But, you know, he, he's a good kid. He's not quite as rough as me. But but my thing is, look, if, if I got to give you 24 hours notice to cancel my appointment, why didn't you give me 24 hours and – make things better for me. Lady Moore Natural, good to have you in here again. How are you? And Paul, you got to love it. Lowe's and liquor stores are still open for business. So you can go get a nail and you can get hammered all at the same time. That was quick too. How you like that? William, Paul Peck, that's a heck of a combo, isn't it? Andrew or man, it just jumped on me. So let me scroll back up here Ooh, or down here. I gotta find out where I'm at now. Man, it did. It jumped far on me that time. Oh, there we go. Uh, Andrew Orr, multifamily jobs here in Kansas and Missouri are continuing despite stay-at-home orders. Contractors are having talks of one trade in a building at a time. Just happy you're getting a paycheck. And you know what, man? Look, it, it is what it is. And my thing is, I've been on some commercial jobs that I'd be like, look, that would probably be okay. They don't have the walls up. They don't have glazing in. Uh, you get up there, there's a, a 25 mile an hour breeze blowing across the floor and everybody's so spread out. You're, I mean, you're not within six feet of anybody. So there, there's different ways to look at it. But at the end of the day, man, take care of yourself. Uh, I know even when, when I was on that job, I was just talking about, we'd go to break and we'd be locked in a room, you know, 20 foot by 20 foot and there'd be 15 of us in here. And, you know, we'd be at benches like picnic tables and stacked in tight. So, man, there's a lot of different things we can do. Just, man, make sure you're taking care of yourself. <clears throat> 
So let me see here. Construction cronies. That's the scary thing for real. How long is this going to go on? And man, we don't know. And, and guys, that that is the worst part about this whole thing is we're clueless. We literally have no idea. But go back and look at China. Six or three to six months. And they're, they're not over it yet. So look at where we're at. Look at where we may be. And all I can say, man, is, is be prepared. Uh, we don't know where we're at. We don't know what it's going to be like. But the the whole thing is, it, it's it's crazy, and, and it's liable to get worse. Uh, let me see where we're at. Uh, there you go, Julie. Stay safe, Mike Hadfield. Praying for all of Europe, and, and that's it, guys. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but man, pray for the world. Because it's not just us. It's it's everybody. Paul Peck, China needs to fork over some cash for their lack of transparency at the beginning of this. You know what? And, and Paul, you're right. Why aren't they, or why weren't they more honest? And, you know, then again, you, you, you hear stories from everybody about how bad it is here, how bad it was there, what they should be doing, what they did. And, and we don't know. You know, did they reach out and our government just say, look, you're China. We really don't believe you. You know, we, we know you're full of it, whatever it is. Uh, and then supposedly they tried sending test kits over and we sent them back. You, know, you hear so many different things. We're, we're, we're never going to know the whole truth. And I mean, I know that, you know, all of y'all know that we're never going to know the whole truth. We can't. And somebody asked me the other day, they said, the government's just putting out all this hype trying to scare everybody and it's like you know look at what they're doing they're very controlled with what they release how they release it and when they release it so my thing is are they really trying to scare us or are they just are they holding back and not telling us everything they know because they know that will just scare the piss out of us and, and piss is a plumbing term so i'm good here but you know do they really know more than they do? But they know, look, if we tell the United States that, they're going to panic. Because I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen. I think they are going to shut down travel completely. There, there will be no airplanes. There will be no buses. There will be no trains. There will be no interstate travel, uh, international travel, anything like that. I think they're going to shut down the uh, – Interstate highways. I don't think that if I wanted to drive from Dallas to Fort Worth or Dallas to Houston, because that, that's a drive I do often, I don't think I'm going to be able to get on 35 and drive. I think if I really want to get there, I'm going to have to find back roads all the way. Now the drive to Houston is going to take me 24 hours instead of just getting on a highway and it taking four or five hours. So that's really what I think is going to happen. But I also think that's probably good for us. And I know that sounds weird, but think about this. If, if, if I'm sick and I stay right here between my office and the house, I'm going to infect a few people. But what if I went to Fort Worth? What if I stopped at a gas station? What if I stopped at a restaurant? What if I stopped, which in Dallas they're closed, but I can still go in and pick up to-go food. But say I do walk in and I infect the person who takes my money and now he sees 300 other people that day. Guys, I think there's a lot of good reasons for what they're doing. And I think that we're just going to have to suck it up and get over it. But I do think that China might have probably been in a position to, to be a little more honest up front. And I think had they, had they done that, you know, maybe we'd have responded a little different. Mike says, Julie, yeah, we are trying to. I was actually supposed to fly out tomorrow to go to a, a new duty station outside of New York, but they suspended all travel and keep it in one place. Yeah, and, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep everybody together. Uh, I've got family that, that's in the military, and you know we don't always know where they're at or anything like that. But you know, th there's a lot of deployment going on. There's a lot of people being moved around. Uh, We've heard that the, the National Guard is like headed to New York, headed to California, headed to Washington State. But, guys, here's the thing is if people aren't going to stay in, it's going to keep spreading. And we're literally 
and, and I put out an article or shared an article, and I think it was on LinkedIn the other day about the, the, the herd and, and the way that this is supposed to help stop it. And if we're not connected on LinkedIn, go connect with me on LinkedIn and look and see what it is that I'm, I'm talking about because, man, uh, we are all going to have to participate in order to help. We can't just let the government find a cure and take care of us. We're all going to have to jump in. Stan, using booties to cover for face masks, uh, and you can fold paper towels, use rubber bands to attach the ears, and instructions is on YouTube. Man, there's always a way to find a way to do anything. But the thing is, I wish, you know, I first started hearing about this, God, a month or two ago, and, and I really wish I'd have reached in and bought, you know, as many N95 masks as I could a month ago just to have them. Now that it's like, hey, these would be good things to have, uh, then you can't find them. So let me scroll back up because it jumped on me again. Right there. <clears throat> Ethan, located in Kansas. You don't know about testing here yet. You're planning to start your apprenticeship after the semester of school. So I'm assuming you're in high school. Uh, man, I'll tell you what. I love the apprenticeship training program. I think it's great. I used to be an instructor at it, and I think there's a lot of programs, a lot of unions, a lot of locals that have an amazing training program. I think there's some that just push people through it, but the most part of them I think are amazing, so that's pretty cool. Tom Flation or, or Flatland, how long do you advise a person to work with a plumber before they do on their own? You know, Tom, we had that conversation earlier. Uh, I'm in Texas, and in Texas, you've got to have two years, 4,000 hours to become a tradesman. You've got to have 4,000 and 8,000 hours to become a journeyman. And I really think, I know that California, I've been introduced to a training program out there that in about nine weeks, they can have a person ready to go on a truck by himself, and I believe it can be done. It really depends on where you're at because what really depends is who have you learned from. Uh, I think an apprentice that learns from me is probably going to be better than an apprentice that learns from some of the plumbers that I know. But then again, there's plumbers that are better than me that those apprentices may do better than the ones I work with. And I think that there's different ways to look at it, but at the end of the day, I think it all gets down to how, how well do you learn? How quick do you learn? What are you capable of learning? And what plumber did you work with and how well did he teach you? Because it's a big deal. Uh, Serge Lay, you love your plumbing job. Never thought it would be this amazing. And I'll tell you what, man, it's so good to hear other people say that because you know I tell people all the time, look, I love this trade. I love my job. I love the career that I chose. And it's not really like I chose it. It's like it chose me. But I love what we do. I love walking into people's houses. I love being able to come in and help people solve problems. And I like the residential service end of it because I actually get to deal with the homeowners, the customers themselves. I've done commercial work and some of the biggest jobs in Dallas for years. You never get to deal with the customer or very seldom. And that's a neat thing to get to deal with that customer, have the customer look at you and smile and be like, wow, you know what? You took great care of me. And, and to me, it's huge. So, man, I, I'm glad to see somebody else look out and say, you know, look, I never thought it'd be this great because it is. Carson Hutchins, will the coronavirus make it harder to get a helper job with a plumbing company? You know, I, I don't think so. Uh, Carson, here's the deal. We don't know how long it's going to go on. Uh, you, you never know what's going to happen. If, you know, here, here's the thing. <laughs> People are going to quit calling plumbers because they don't know when they're going to have another paycheck coming in. And that's going to hurt all of us. Uh but then again, people that have to have plumbing, people that are like, look, my toilet's overflowing and I can't stop it. They're going to have to call a plumber. Now, what we're afraid of is what, what about when we get out there, take care of them, and then they say, oh, look, I can't pay you. 
And man, things like that are going to happen and we need to know in advance how to handle it. So we're, we're working on things like that because we always want to look ahead. It may be harder or it may take a little bit longer, but I think you'll still be able to get a job as a plumbing apprentice. Stan, six feet now, absolutely. Ethan, you recently decided to join the trades instead of continuing with college. Okay. Trying to learn where you can go with plumbing. Man, here, here's the deal, and I tell people this all the time. You can go wherever you want to go. Uh, look at me. I graduated high school, barely. Uh, I was always in trouble. Uh, I love to fight. And I, I was always, man, I'd get in trouble. And I hate to say it because I see Sheila G in here now. Uh, I used to get traffic tickets, and I would always forget to pay them. Uh, Sheila will tell you what happens when that happens. Uh, but I was always in trouble. And I woke up one day and said, look, I don't want to be that person anymore. I want to be a good person. I want to help. I want to do things right. I want to quit fighting. I want to help make the world a better place. You can move up from apprentice to a journeyman, to a master, to a superintendent, to a foreman, to a project manager, to a director of operations, to a company owner. You can do what you want to do. And, and look at me. I was that kid that if you'd have gone back to my high school class and said, hey, one day Roger Wakefield is going to do great things for the trades, they'd have laughed at you. They'd have said, you're thinking of the wrong Roger Wakefield. But, guys, here's the deal. You can do what you want to do. And I needed people I didn't even know to tell me that to let me decide, okay, I want to do better. Sheila G., good to have you in here. Safety equipment is important. Proper use and disposal of the equipment, gloves, mask, and so on, is just as important. You've seen the right equipment used the wrong way. Yeah, it is useless. And, it, and it's neat because I did that the other day whenever I was doing the gloves. I was literally showing people how, you know, how to take it off the proper way. And you don't just like slide the glove up. And, and I, I started doing that. But literally you grab it from the outside and you pull it and, and then turn it the other way. And there's a right way to do it. But think about it. If you take that glove and slide up under here to get it off, now you're taking this contaminated finger and you're sliding it right along your skin. So that's a no-no. You grab it from the outside and do the same way the other way. Guys, you, you never want to touch the outside of that glove to your skin. That part is contaminated. So, Sheila, I like the way you put that. Uh, you will take the basic hand washing plus distance all day long. Important to do a reset after each encounter, contact, or job. The, this too shall pass. And, and Sheila, you're right. And, and, look, thank you for being in here and commenting. I do appreciate it. And it's funny because, you know, what you said, I thought about something. I saw the funniest video, and it was it was how to get out of a traffic ticket. And it, it shows this guy sitting in the car, and he, he looks in the, the rearview mirror, and you see the police car behind him. And then you see this officer get out and come walking up to the window. And the officer gets up the window, and this guy just literally takes a piece of paper, sticks it up in the window. It says, I've got the coronavirus. The guy, the cop just kind of waves and smiles and goes back to his car. You know, Look, the right equipment used the wrong way it is horrible. And even, even worse than that, it gives people a false sense of security. And if you're, not, if you're just going to give equipment to people, man, you're, you're, you're creating that false sense of security. And, and what I like about what Sheila said is, look, train people the right way. Because if you're not training them to use that safety equipment, they're better off staying at home, washing their hands every 10 minutes, and they're going to come out good on the other end. They may not be as safe or, or as happy because they've been locked in the house for, for three weeks, but it, it's better than being locked in a coffin forever. So, man, teach people to use safety equipment the right way. That's huge. Uh Sarge Lay, where you live, man, I live just outside of Dallas, Texas. And I'll tell you what, I think this is the greatest place on earth. So I love it. Construction cronies, your government is saying as of now, it looks like we'll be late May, early June. So say it, say it goes to early June right there. Three months, guys, three months. Like I just said a while ago, China's going three to six. They're still fighting it. They've been fighting it, we know of, since December, but we think September. 
So think about where we're at. Think about where we're going to be. If this thing goes three months, how prepared are you? Are you ready to lock yourself in your house for three months? Because that may be what it gets down to. Uh, yeah, back then. Julie, uh, international flights are suspended now. You suspect domestic will be restricted soon. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, Paul Peck agrees. Stan, love those makeshift ideas for masks. Saw a video on Facebook on how to turn a bra into a mask. Crazy, but it looked like a great idea. I'll tell you what, man, I'm all on board for it. Uh, I know that's funny, but I'm joking. Uh, Frank James, hard to believe who is telling us facts if you watch MSNBC or Fox. You know what? And, and look, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about MSNBC or Fox, too, because we don't know where they're getting their information. And guys, look, I'm not a political guy. Uh, I hate politics, and I've had to talk more politics here in the last year than any plumber I know should ever have to. But here's the thing. We don't know where they're getting their information. We don't know the information we're getting is true or propaganda. But I'll tell you this. We've got to believe somebody. And we've either got to say, hey, look, I'm going to take them at their word, and I'm going to do what they say to do because I think it's better than doing nothing. Or we just say, hey, to, to heck with it. I'm not going to pay attention to anybody. Remember what I said about living the rest of your life in a box. It may not be fun. And, and the thing is, guys, remember, we've all got to help look out for each other. And when we're feeling sick, we can't just say, hey, look, I'm going to go to the store anyway. Maybe we call somebody else and say, hey, look, I'm not feeling real good. Will you go pick me up some toilet paper? I'm out and I need it. And it's going to get ugly if you don't. And hopefully we can help take care of each other like that. <clears throat> Let me see. Plumber exp plumbing explained. Are you still running calls on this craziness? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Pro X. Oh, my God, I have hope. Man, we, we've all got hope. But, but, guys, it takes us looking out for ourselves. Not, not just looking out for each other, but also looking out for ourselves. This is almost like being on the plane and the oxygen mask falls out. Take care of yourself first. Because if you don't take care of you, you can't take care of anybody else. And, man, I, I, I really didn't think that this was going to be all about corona tonight, but maybe it is. And I didn't even bring limes. Paul Peck. I oh, know. It's bad when you're getting your hope from a plumber. That, that's a scary thought. Kairos, you're a comp computer developer in France, and you quit your job to start plumbing. You want to work with your hands and be useful. Came across my YouTube channel, and I comfort you in your idea. Keep up the good work. Kairos, I, I appreciate that because, look, I, I love this trade. I love what we do. I love the profession. I love the trades in general because I know a lot of students or a lot of people – that have gone to college, got student loans, and, and they can't even work in their career or their or their their field of choice. And and don't get me wrong, I don't think that I don't think the trades are for everybody. It is hard work, but I also don't think four years of college is for everybody either. I don't think it'd have been great for me, <clears throat> except if I got to play football and hang out with college girls, I might have had more fun than learning plumbing. But I tell you what, I love what I do. And, guys, I still learn plumbing. I still I, I look at it. I enjoy it. I learn it. I, I look at ways to improve it. I look at things that I can do different. And I, and I look at stuff like this all the time. So, man, thank you. Sheila G., you know I'm going to preach. It's what I do. Pro X, you're 25 doing plumbing for almost a year now. Uh, putting priority on your learn or learning your tools, fittings, plumbing code, and blueprints. Do you feel like it's a good idea? I'll tell you what, it used to, I used to tell people, and I don't know if you can see them over my corner, but I've got the, the UPC study guide. I think I've even got the IPC study guide. Uh, my big thing is anytime you're educating yourself, you're giving yourself knowledge that nobody can ever take away from you. And I love the fact that. I used to tell people to wait. Or I used to tell people when they're getting ready for their journeyman exam, start studying now. And then I started looking at it different. It's like, wait a minute. If I'd have known this stuff when I started plumbing, when I first started as an apprentice, if I'd have learned code, learned how to do things, learned how to do things right, 
man, it could have could have changed the world for me. I'd have learned it a little bit quicker. Because now it's not just what am I learning? It's I'm learning from my journeyman, but also know now what he's talking about because I've studied it. And man, I think it's amazing. Learn all you can. Uh, I still remember learning code, learning blueprints, things like that. So yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Sean and KC on vacay mode. You got to love it. Cruise reviews and more. How are you? Uh, are there any vacations planned that it looks like you might actually get to go do? And I'm just wondering because I know that, man, here in Texas, they are, guys, they are cutting everything. I think they're fixing to cut travel. I was actually supposed to be, remember those of y'all I talked to last week, told y'all I wouldn't be here tonight because I'm supposed to be in Chicago right now. Actually, I'm supposed to be getting on a plane about an hour from now to fly back from Chicago. And that didn't happen. So, man. It is what it is, but we've all got to be safe and we've got to take care of ourselves first. Drake, Kevin Drake Fitness, your company had a parking lot meeting. It was random. Thought we were getting fired, but it was a serious talk about the coronavirus. Our owner wants to contain the virus and we were being safe. You know, you got to love it. We did a meeting this morning and we told our guys, look, this is going to be the last meeting we have together. We're going to start doing Zoom meetings. We're going to start talking to our guys. There's a lot of different things that we're, we're looking at and working on. And guys, remember, this is new to all of us. We've never had this problem. Not like this. There's, there's nobody alive here in the United States that has been through what we're going through. So we're learning on the fly. And what we've got to do is we have to help each other. We have to support each other. And we have to figure out what we can do to make our lives safer. And it's funny because every time I tell my story, somebody will send me a message and say, man, I didn't even think about that. I went and met with a roofer this morning looking at a job. And when I told him about the thing that we're reading to customers that call in, he said, I, I want a copy of that. So we gave it to him. But, guys, it's r and I know you all are thinking research and development. It's rip off and duplicate. Uh, I got this from somebody yesterday or the day before. So here's the thing, guys. We're all going to implement the things we think we need to do to make the world a better place, to make it safer, to make it safer for us. And, man, that's what's going to happen. <clears throat> Boy, it just jumped on me real far that time. Mm, let me roll back up right there. Uh, Ramon Van Niekerk. Ramon Van Niekerk, how are you? Let's get it, plumbers. Man, we always do, or we try. Stan Chubik, baked potato with the work, plus brisket and cheese sticks and banana pudding. Man, if that's dinner tonight, sounds great to me. Sean and KC, we will be on lockdown for the rest of the year. They're going to have to be tested, all of us, before this. Yeah, and you're right. Uh, Sean and KC, where, where are y'all located? Because I, I think you're right. I think... I don't know if it'll be the whole year, but I think that we're pretty much locked down till September. And guys, that's why I keep saying, look, we don't know what's coming up, but we need to be prepared. And, you know, we have to be smart and we have to look out for each other. It's going to get crazy. Just understand that and understand, look, it's okay. And if you need somebody to talk to, call somebody. You need somebody to message, message somebody. You need somebody to Laugh at every Monday night. Man, log in here. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I know, tell you what I think. But at the end of the day, and I'm just a plumber trying to do a job, but I want to keep my guys, my family, and my customers safe. And that's really a big deal to us. Uh, Jake Vallis, if you went over this before, you apologize, but how do you feel about pipelining? Uh, I hadn't gone over that tonight. Uh you know, I've never done it. I, I've talked to other companies that do. I've talked to companies that love it. But I do a lot of slab leaks and leak detection, and normally I find breaks and are severe breaks, and the pipelining is not going to go in there and fix that and straighten it out. If it was just a hole, maybe. If it was just channel rot, maybe. And I checked into it in the beginning. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the brand that I checked into, but I think it was going to cost me about $150,000 for the complete setup for everything that I was looking at. And I was just like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. But tell me what you think about it. 
Dave Gorris, your dad had you when you were five going to work with him, now 66, and still love plumbing. Dave, you know what? My, my son uh, is an estimator for one of the largest mechanical contractors here in Dallas. And when he was 13, he'd come out and help me. And the good thing is, man, he's a good kid. He he didn't complain much. He jumped. I mean, man, I remember him digging a hole one day. It was like three foot wide and three foot square. And, man, we never found what we were looking for. And he never once got frustrated. He's like, well, it is what it is. We look for it. And that was before we had the tracing equipment and stuff that we do now. So it was a big deal to me. But, man, love his attitude. Sean and KC. Why would your washer water keep backing up out of the drain holes? What should you do to unclog it? I mean, there's a couple of different things. You can go pick up like the small little handheld sewer machine, like a top sink snake. It, it could just be down the P-trap. You might be able to stick a blow bag down there and do that. Uh, just be careful sometimes. I have seen it clogged up further down, and that caused water to come out the vent on the roof, which actually gets in your attic too. Uh I'd probably try a small sewer machine first. Maybe try a small sewer machine going in from the attic. So there's different ways you can do it, but, man, that that's one to get that one taken care of. You don't want to mess up your flooring or your wood. Stan says, shame the politics are still playing dirty. Uh, and I know they are here in Texas. Uh, we still don't have a board for our plumbing. Uh, the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners still has empty seats and so many problems with what all's going on. Okay, so Sean and Casey, I love this. Uh, Y'all are in Houston. Uh, if Julie's still in here, we're my wife and I, Julie, are starting up Master Networks down in Houston. And I tell you what, it is a, a great way to grow your business. It's been good for me up here. So I love that and glad to have y'all in here. Uh, we actually, matter of fact, should, should be going to Houston tomorrow night, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for last Tuesday. Uh, which is the Houston Young Professionals at the St. Regis, but I know that shut down. Oliver Clive, question. Do you think the apartment maintenance trade or strictly plum plumbing trade has more of a shortage? Uh, more need for skilled tradesmen is your company in need. Uh, Oliver, here's the deal. I need, well, uh, until all this quarantine stuff happened, um, I'm, I'm looking for certain skilled positions. I will tell you this though, if I had a choice, if, if I were looking at getting in the trades right now and my choice was to be an apartment maintenance person or plumbing, I think I would go plumbing because I think in the long run, you're going to make a lot more money. And the apartment, tr the apartment maintenance person, the thing that I like most about that though, is you get to learn different things. So as an apartment maintenance person, you may learn HVAC. You may learn electrical. Or, or I mean, you will. You're going to end up having to do it. But here's what I like about the trades, being a specialist at, at one particular thing. Most plumbers and electricians and things like that that I know probably make $30 an hour or more. Uh, and I've told people for a long time now, I think in the next five years, Plumbers are going to be making about $100 an hour on the check. And I say that because the lack of people getting into the trades, the amount of people retiring from the trades, and it's just getting worse, guys. And right now, the union package here in Dallas is about $45 an hour. I think it's going to get crazy. And I think it's going to do it in the next five years because of lack of people in the trade. So if it was up to me, Oliver... I would be trying to get into plumbing, get my license as quick as possible because I think it's going to be good. Paul, you know, man, you were the first one to notice it. Uh, we, we did this the other day. and Man, I wish Will was still in here. Uh, we we had a problem with one of our cables, and Will, uh, I told him, so, man, look, just, just order two new cables. Let's get it going. And he came into my office. He said, they come in colors. Do you want me to order green? I said, absolutely. And it does, man. It just jumps out. So thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate that. It's neat that you noticed it. Uh, yeah, Sean and Casey selling hello to Paul. Guys, if y'all have not gone over to Paul's channel and subscribe, you need to. Paul does great videos. Paul's channel is like three times as big as mine. He's killing it. 
And man, he just does wonderful stuff. And man, such an amazing person and a good friend. So man, y'all go over and check him out. Uh, Jake Vallis, think it's a good solution. If you have a whole channel right or some really minor separations, as long as the line has good pitch. However, for the price, uh, I think it's usually more effective, efficient to repipe. And we don't do a lot of complete repipes. Every now and then we do. We've done a couple here lately. Uh, normally we'll go in and do spot repairs. Uh, and, man, we're, we're really pretty good at it. Uh, our location, our isolation, we can normally go in and tell people exactly where the problems are, what the problems are, what we can do to fix it and go from there. And, and it normally works out really, really well. Uh, DR702, I love that. Uh, 24 in Vegas and about to start your apprenticeship in the union. That's fantastic. And the Vegas union probably does as much or more work than anybody in the U.S. There's always a call for people to come out there, which there's so much big commercial work going on. It, it is a big, big deal. And, man, they're staying busy. But there's almost a, always a major call to go over there. Uh, Jake Vallis, as far as pipelining goes, no, I understood you. I appreciate that. Oliver, yeah, that's what you were thinking. Uh, get a nice foundation of everything. And, Oliver, that's the deal. If you want to if you want to get a foundation of everything, the, the, the maintenance thing's fine. Uh, I mean, you're going to learn sheetrock. You're going to learn plumbing, electrical, HVAC, carpet. You're going to learn a little bit of everything. My thing, though, is if, if you're good at a little of everything, you're not a master of anything. Paul Peck is a master drywaller. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to do it. He knows how to tell people to do it. I'm a master plumber. I've got every endorsement in Texas. I'm a lead AP. I used to be Green Plumbers USA. There's so many things that I know about plumbing. It's crazy. But I keep studying it because I want to learn more. If you know every trade, it's kind of really hard to master one because you're, you're focused on all of them. You're, you're trying to put too much knowledge in. The thing that I tell people is, look, go an inch wide, but go a mile deep. And so my thing was plumbing. So I wanted to learn everything about plumbing that I could, and that's kind of how I've focused in on it. Uh, so I, I hope that that helps. Paul Peck, brother, you, you're welcome. You're doing amazing things, and I really do appreciate it. Burnt, pl burnt Clutch, how are we doing? Let me see. Your journeyman, should I go for getting irrigation license? And, and I tell you what, that that's one. Here in Texas, I think we can get our irrigation license. We just have to apply for it. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, – man, if, if that's something you want to do, absolutely. Me, I never wanted to. When I say that I've got all my, my plumbing licenses, you know, in Texas we can get the endorsements of Medgas, uh, Water Supply Protection Specialist, and multi-purpose residential fire protection systems. And I've got all those. I do it because I wanted to be able to do anything with my company that I wanted to. So it's always been a big deal to me. But the irrigation license, I've never wanted to just because there's so many people around here that do irrigation. I could never beat their price. And my thing, guys, is I've never wanted to be the cheapest company. I've always wanted to be the best. And, and if that means... I charge more uh, for the work that we do because we do it better. I'm fine with that. I never want to have to charge a lower price just to compete with other people. And I get people call me all the time. I say, well, you're higher than other people. Okay. We do it better, and I don't know what it is they're giving up to do it cheaper. I don't know if it's quality. I don't know if it's product. I can't have the best people use the best product and get it done in a timely manner and be the cheapest. It doesn't happen. So we're not going to be the cheapest. Oliver, inch wide and a mile deep. Man, I've been saying that one for a long time. More than welcome. Jake Vallis, seeing as most of the houses in the Dallas area are newer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dallas has been around for hundreds of years. There are areas of Dallas that have houses almost 100 years old. There are some 100 years old. Uh, most of the houses in Dallas are probably not newer. Um, most of the houses in Dallas are probably built, I'm going to say pre-1980, maybe pre-1990. So that still means these things are 30 years old or more for the most part. 
Now, as you get further out, there are, are a lot of newer houses, and there's a lot of neighborhoods in Dallas that are being torn down for newer houses. But I think most of the houses are older. Uh, so do I often get work with old pipe, clay, uh, transite concrete, or things like that? I've run into concrete pipe in Fort Worth, uh, clay in Dallas, transite I hadn't run into in, man, man, I don't know that I have, not around here. Uh, Joe, you're from VA, Virginia, and your governor just announced all non-essential businesses to close for 30 days. What do I think will happen if we'd be forced to shut down two and someone's water heater burst? And Joe, that that's it. You know, the White House has already come out and said plumbing is essential. And I don't think they're going to be able to cut us down. Like you said, all businesses, non-essential, must close. They've called plumbing essential. People can't live without water, and, and they, they know that. So I think that we're going to be fine, but it's scary. We still need to take care of each other, and by that I mean not just us and our companies, but our customers. So we, we've got to look at what we can do. Yeah, plumbers are essential workers, so you can still go fix that heater, and, and, and I think that's right, and I think that's the way it's going to be. Uh, guys, I'm getting ready to shut down. Uh, I, I, know, I know I hadn't gone an hour and a half tonight, but it, it's getting to be a long day and I still need to get home. And man, this has been fun. I really didn't think that we talk about the coronavirus all night, but it is what it is. Uh, it's affecting all of us. And you know, what I'm going to ask y'all to do is contact your government and ask, what can y'all do to help contact the governor of the state that you're in and say, look, what can we do to help make things better and explain that you're a plumber and or a drywaller, but you know, see what we can do to make the world a better place. Guys, it is kind of crazy. Everything going on right now. And I completely get that. But here's the thing is, look, we're going to get through it and we're going to get through it. Hopefully and survive. Uh, Brent Clutch, you're more welcome, or you're so welcome. Sean and Casey, hopefully this shutdown on travel is over by the summertime. You're waiting on Galveston Port to open up. It's part of your business providing cruise reviews. Good for you. Joe, uh, if it becomes a martial law and a whole state shuts down, would essential businesses still be open? I think that it will be because you're not going to be able to tell people you can't have food. Stores, restaurants, certain things are essential. The right to water is essential, and, and I think that it still will be. But, you know, if it's martial law, that's why I have my license to carry. Uh, it is what it is. got to be ready. Uh, thanks for the tips on the washing machine issue with the water clogs. You know, give us a call down here if there's anything I can do to help talk you through it. I've, I've got some ideas of things you may try that may help too. So there's always something that, that we can try to figure out. Paul Peck, you're more than welcome, guys. Paul, my moderator, uh, Will was in here earlier. Julie, Grayson, man, thank you all for all you do. Uh, Jake Vallis, manage no matter what happens, essential businesses will stay open. Yes, indeed. Joe, you're more than welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, I agree on business would stay open. Have to have to. Good night, everyone. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Lead AP is leadership and energy and energy environmental design l e e d a p and the a p is accredited professional so guys i hope you enjoyed it if you have please give me a thumbs up share it tell somebody hello miss michelle just jumped up in here thank you so much i appreciate it guys if you like this share it give me a thumbs up tell other people about it watch one of my other videos and we'll go there I hope everything goes great for y'all. I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.